seated, dear brothers and sisters. Well, good morning once again. Now, the Word of God presents to us the stories of two widows in extreme need, yet who are willing to sort of risk it all. So turn with me to the first reading, which comes from the first book of Kings, chapter 17, verse 10 to 16. And let me paint to you the historical context so you know what's going on. It's about 800 years before the birth of Jesus. And the king of Israel was a man named Ahab. And his wife was Queen Jezebel. But they were very, very wicked. And their wickedness produced a curse upon the land. And a terrible drought took place. And it didn't rain for around three years. And this resulted, of course, in a severe famine among the people. In modern times, you could say their economy was in a great depression. Yet at the time, at that time, there was one true prophet of God. His name was Elijah. And Elijah said that it was the king's idolatry that brought about the drought and the famine in the land. So when the leaders of a nation, but also the leaders of a family, commit idolatry, don't be surprised if God withdraws his blessings from that nation or even family. Now, the prophet Elijah asked the widow for some water and for some bread, and check out how the widow responded. 1 Kings 17, 12. As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked. There is only a handful of flour in my jar and a little oil in my jug. Just now, I was collecting a couple of sticks to go, to go in and prepare something for myself and my son. When we have eaten it, we shall die. Wow. What a dramatic a statement by, this, by uh, this widow. They were about to starve to death. You know, I was told before I got here that at the beginning of the pandemic, when everything was sort of shut down here in San Pedro for several months, a lot of people were very quickly ran out of food. And if they didn't have savings, they were in dire need. Thank God there were at that time some very generous people here in San Pedro that began to share their resources. And I'm told that the church was able to provide lots and lots of food and dispense us to many, many people. Praise God for that. Now, the widow basically said to Elijah, I don't have enough food to give you. I only have two things. I have a little flour in my jar and I have a little oil in my jug, and that's it. Now, the jar with flour is a symbol of our capacity, of your capacity, to feed your family. So the jar with flour represents your work. It represents your income. It represents your wallet. It represents your checking account, your savings account. Now, the jug of oil is also symbolic. The jug of oil is a symbol for the Holy Spirit. And so the jug represents your capacity to love and believe. It represents your capacity to receive God's anointing. The jug is your capacity to have faith. And all of us have a jar, and all of us have a jug. All of us. Yet perhaps your jar and your jug are also about to go empty. Father, in my wallet there's only enough food to feed my family one time, and after that, I don't know what I'm going to do. So, if so, perhaps you're more like this widow than you think. Now, check out what the first thing the prophet said to her. Verse 13. Elijah said to her, do not be afraid. Go and do as you propose. But first, make me a little cake and bring it to me. Do me a favor. Please tell the person next to you. Do not be afraid. Could you say that? Just tell the person next to you. Do not be afraid. So that's the first thing he said. Don't be afraid. Take it easy. Chill out. And then he basically said, okay, don't be afraid to give me what little you have to eat. For the God of Israel promises that if you do, your jug and your jar will not go empty. Now, if I was a widow... I might have said, are you kidding? You want me to give you the last little bit of food that I have for my son and, and for me, Mr. Prophet, you better ask someone else, I might have said. 
Now, there's a big lesson here. Never be afraid to give what God asks of you. Never be afraid to invest in, 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 in those that are proclaiming God's word because then you will receive a prophet's reward. Why? Because God will never ever be outdone in generosity. And that widow actually trusted that God would take care of them. Because check out verse 15 to 16 says, she left and did as Elijah had said. She was able to eat for a year. And he and her son as well. The jar of flour did not go empty, nor the jug of oil run dry, as the Lord had foretold through Elijah. That's beautiful. God used this widow to provide Elijah one meal, and then God used Elijah to provide the widow and her family food for an entire year. And miraculously, her jar of flour never went empty, and her jug of oil never ran dry. Big lesson. When you place your jar of flour and your jug of oil at the service of God, your jar will never go empty, and your jug will never run dry. Why? Because your circumstances do not de determine the capacity that God has to change your circumstances and to provide within your circumstances. So today, I invite you to place your jar and to place your jug, whatever that might be, at the service of God. If you wish, please repeat after me. God, my Father, I recognize with gratitude that everything I have comes from you. This day I place my jar and my jug at your service. Amen. Good job. Now let's go to the gospel to see the faith and generosity of another widow. Now turn to with me to the gospel according to St. Mark chapter 12, verse 41 to 44. And the word of God says, a poor widow also came and put in two small coins worth a few cents. Calling his disciples to himself, he, Jesus, said to him, said to them, I mean, I say to you, this poor widow put in more than all the other contributors to the treasury. For they have all contributed from their surplus wealth, but she from her poverty has contributed all she had, her whole livelihood. Woo, let's stop there. This widow took a big risk. She had no workforce system, no work, no means of support, yet she took what little she had, two small coins worth a few pennies, and she made of them an offering to God in the temple in Jerusalem. And Jesus was right there looking at the treasury, and it got Jesus' attention. And he praised her generosity because she gave not in portion, she gave in proportion. In other words, the others gave a portion of their surplus money while she gave 100% of what she had. You see, from God's perspective, it's not the amount of the gift that matters. What matters to God is the sacrifice involved in giving the gift. St. Mother Teresa of Calcutta likely liked to say, give until it hurts. It's not easy, but that's what the widows did. It hurt both those widows like, e, I don't know, okay, I'm going to give you my last. And they did it. Now, the widow could have chosen to hold on to her last two coins and said, nope, I'm not letting go of my last two pennies. I'm holding them tight. No, today some people choose to cling and and, and hold tight and never let go of what they have. Let me give you an interesting example. You know, I heard that some hunters catch spider monkeys by placing some nuts inside a heavy container. And they make a small hole in the container just big enough for the monkey to stick its hand through the container and grab the nuts. But once the monkey grabs the nuts, their fist is too large and they can't pull out their hand, and they're trapped. Yet all the monkey has to do is let go of the nuts, and it's free. But these stubborn little monkeys won't let go of the nuts. 
little monkey, let go of the nuts and you're free, but they won't. I think some people are like the stubborn little monkeys. They won't let go, ni son codos. You know, they're very stick. They won't even let go of that little bit. God wants to form in you many different virtues, including the virtues of trust and detachment and freedom and love and generosity. But to grow in these virtues sooner or later, you're going to have to be willing to let go and give away some of your material possessions. Let go. Don't be like the stubborn monkey because you'll get trapped with that. You'll get trapped by it. Now this widow truly was free because she generously offered what little she had to God. So what is the virtue of generosity? Let me finish by giving you a simple definition. Please repeat after me. Generosity is carefully managing my resources so that I can freely give to those in need. You see, so a generous person does not spend everything frivolously until he has nothing. No, that's dumb. A generous person manages well the resources so that then they can give. See, as a disciple of Jesus, we have and you have, and so do I, a divine responsibility to manage and then contribute generously our resources to building up the body of Christ. And so I invite you to make with me four final decisions to be a more generous person. If you wish, just repeat after me. I will share with others from what I have. Good. Second decision, I will give without expecting anything in return. Awesome. Third decision, I will give until it hurts. That's a tough one. Final decision. I will praise the generosity that I see in others. Excellent. Live these decisions, and you will be linked to God's own generosity, and his blessings will begin to flow through you. And you know what? Your jar and your jug will never be empty. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.